Today we are diving into the very crucial aspect of API security, the authorization header. Authorization is a gatekeeper for your API, a determining who gets access to what resources. So let's walk you through a demonstration first and then we will dive deep into the coding aspect of it. So I've created an API with the endpoint of create and I'm passing the authorization in the header and I'm passing a key over here and let's send it once to check. So right now it's saying 401 unauthorized error. So what we'll do is we'll go to our login API that we created in the earlier videos. If you have not watched it, I will definitely suggest you to have a look at it once and I will put the link on the top and I will click the send over here again. And here you can see that I have gotten a response in the ID token. So this ID token is really crucial for us uh, because it's generated by Firebase and it tells us which person is trying to access your API. So I'm going to replace this authorization key over here and see. Uh, so I will click send and yeah, so we are getting four, uh, 200 error, right? 200 uh, success response right now and I'm getting said as a response because I have passed uh, in the body set. So let's do it once more and type a test over here. And we'll click a send. So right now what you can see is if the authorization key is valid, we are getting a positive response. But if we try to tamper around with this right now, I'm changing it a bit and try to send it, it shows us unauthorized. So now that the basics of authorization is clear and how it's being passed, we'll go to the uh, Java aspect of it and see how the code works. As you can see my screen, uh, in the dependency, I have added a new dependency that is your uh, Spring Boot Starter Security. Uh, this will handle our entire authorization journey and how the things will work. The next step is to create a filter config Java file. Uh, so I will explain you what this filter config does basically. So it's a configurational file and it's a bean. So it will be attached to the program as soon as the program starts. And what it's effectively telling is to load up the filter registration bean and uh, the authorization filter i will go to that class and in this class what we are doing is we are making it as a bean and we are adding a url pattern to it okay that is api slash and you are telling that whichever apis that come into it whichever uh, api that has the endpoint as slash api like this slash api uh, it should be authorized and it should be authenticated so we'll go ahead and check the firebase authentication filter class so what effectively this filter class does is it's it it checks it takes the request as an input and it ex extracts the http request out of it and it gets the url so this options part you can just ignore as of now because it will be handled and explained to you on a later videos about why we need to enable the options and everything but coming down to it if you see that the http request we are passing and checking if it has an authorization string in it and we are checking if it's the, if it's the id token and the id token is not null once it has gone into it it will check and uh, verify the if the firebase auth uh, instance is valid or not and it will go ahead and check verify the id token that which we have passed once verifying it it will get the uid from it the user id and this entire process then will lead to the successful passing it from this particular method uh, the firebase authentication filter over here and let's go ahead and check what I have created in the user auth controller. So I've created a very simple API that is your create endpoint. And I'm just taking a string uh, as an input and I'm just returning that string only for this video purposes. So right now, what all we have learned, we have learned that uh, the filter needs to be done and the API endpoint has to be put on. And this is the user ID. So let's do one thing. We'll put a debugger over here and see how this this user id that you are getting should match the user id that we have provided okay so the debugger has started let's go ahead and uh, go uh, to login once and we'll send the login api again we'll copy the id token we'll copy the id token and put it in the create over here so right now we'll click on send so the debugger has stopped over here and you can see in the decode token uh, while we open the claims and we will check that this user id we have got a user id right so we'll go ahead and check this in our firebase instance as well so this user id that we are using to log in that user at that example this uid and the uid that we are receiving in our code matches so that means that it is a valid token and we can proceed with this fact and it's returning 
the variable as the test variable okay so i hope this video is pretty much clear about how to set up your entire process i will attach the code in the description itself itself of the video hope you like this video and in the next video what we will do is we'll go ahead and start off with the user creation process that we explained again in the previous video of the explanation of it so we will we have effectively set up this part of it that we are accepting all the authorizations but next next we'll move to create the get api and the post api for the creation journey and all this data will be imported from this api itself so catch you up in the next video and hope you guys like the video so definitely do subscribe to the channel to follow up on more yeah happy coding guys